and uh, I think it was one of those cases of uh, he thought he would be almost celebrated for it, and maybe to some folks in Portsmouth he was, but uh, the hammer fell pretty quickly against Mr. Schaefer. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Carpenter, Green Up uh, Judge Executive, told us when we interviewed him about a month ago that he would like to find the Rock a good home. The county uh, storage garage that it's in uh, is needed for salt for the winter for the roads. It's a uh, somewhere around six ton rock. Uh, it takes up a lot of space. He would like to find a good home for it. He mentioned there was talks about Greenbow Lake at one point. Funding was an issue. There was talks of moving it uh, to South Shore, Kentucky. Funding was an issue. But uh, where do you feel that a good home would be for the rock now? after 10 years almost. You know, I think somewhere in South Shore Arena, in uh, sh a shelter that's covered, some park, some place where it can be interpreted. Uh, so as long as you, it's in a place that's protected from the elements, where you can have interpretation, and that people can come visit and really learn from this. And so you can not only interpret the rock, but interpret how it got to where it, it was and that history and hopefully maybe educate other people about why why you just don't want to run out take a petroglyph and say hey I preserve this when you in, in doing so you've destroyed the site yeah there were some folks who wanted to put it back in the river at one point yeah and and that was that was something that was you know talked about a lot because uh, you were putting it back in context because because part of the rock is where it was located its significance is context sitting in the river. So, you know, if at some point they did lower the Ohio, you would see that rock in its prominent place. But I said, if you, you know, if it was up, to, if it was me initially, I would have been saying, okay, let's let's put up signage, let's have a little park here, have these nice didactic rails where you could interpret the rock, have pictures of it, and I think that would have informed people as much as anything because they could then see, okay, this is where it's located and visualize that. Well, you know, the Rock had a lot of interesting history. There was a, um, um, an artist at one point painted a panoramic and had imagery of the Rock, and it looked like an Easter Island head emerging out of the Ohio River. Yeah. And of course, several photographs and uh, accounts of seeing the Rock. So, I mean, very historical. Yeah. And very interesting. In, uh, it's 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 like almost seeing a rare buffalo covered with a tarp now when you see it and it's it's sad so why did the rock garner so much national media attention cbs news did a feature on it npr did a national feature on it the new york times did an article yeah that's a good question and you know it seemed like when cbs did their thing and uh, I forget that guy's name. Steve uh, Hartman. Steve Hartman, who's from Ohio, and he get you know he put it on a slant, of, you know this this fight between the states and Kentucky's being ridiculous, you know, and I think that's where then the other media outlets picked up, uh, and you know you could see his clear Ohio bias uh, in that story which to this day, whenever I see him on CBS Sunday morning, still elicits that reaction out of me. Because, you know, but that's what, you know, he, and he made fun of it. He made, you know, he made light of really what is a serious problem. And uh, so we actually sent letters and comments to CBS, and we actually sent things to the New York Times when they did the same, they followed up. And I think NPR, nobody responded, but. You know, they were making light of really a serious, the, the problem of looting of antiquities is a major problem in this country. And basically they were making light of that. Yeah, and um, a lot of local media, not so much Lexington and Louisville, but the, the West, West Virginia media had a field day of stories about the war between the states. Right. And some of the Ohio folks actually dressed up as Civil War Union soldiers and were going to protect the rock for a good television right. picture. Yeah. And I, I also think it played into the East Coast 
bias, uh, preconceptions of the region. What's a, any lasting comment you'd like to say about the rock or looting or how, what this whole process has taught people or should have taught people? Yeah. Well, again, I think it goes back to my, my main thing is, is there was a process in place uh, for Mr. Schaefer to have, you know, applied for a permit to do this and consulted with everybody. And I think, as I said before, if he had done that, if he had consulted with all the parties, the Kentucky Historic Preservation Office, the Ohio Historic Preservation Office, the Corps of Engineers, the public, like Dwight Cropper, would have had an opportunity to comment, the Office of State Archaeology here. So everybody would have had an opportunity to comment on it and work with him to develop a plan, not only to take it out of the ground, but what are you going to do with it? have to get out of that. And, and that would have involved having the funding in place. Having the city of Portsmouth say, okay, we're putting up fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 to interpret this, but one, to protect it in an environment that we know is going to protect it, and to interpret it. And I, if he had done that, it, that it would have been a different story, because he would have done it in part under the National Historic Preservation Act. And Section 106 of that act requires that federal agencies that are given our permits take into account their impacts on archaeological sites and other historic resources. But it's not like an act that says, no, you can't do things. The whole thing about the Section 106 Act is consultation, meeting, discussing, talking, coming to basically oftentimes a compromise on what's best for but compromise that's what's best for the resource. Um, it, it's interesting looking back on it all now. And, um, it, 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 it's sad seeing it in that garage. I wish people could actually look at it and see it. And kind of with it so. Yeah, well, that's the thing. See, the thing is, is, you know, what's the end result has been the rock is removed from its context, the site. So you want, you've destroyed the site, you removed the rock from its context. And it's just as hidden today as it was if it was in the river. So it would have been, in a lot of ways, just better off left in the river, as I said before, put up didactic rails, just interpret it, have pictures, sort of picture, and you could have done a lot with it. And if what you're interested in tourism, that would have been as, as good for your tourism as putting it in a building. But it is, it's, you know, and, and we see this a lot. In, you know, again, a lot of rock art is taken from its proper context, and once you, once you've removed it from that, it, it loses a lot of its significance. Yeah. All right. We good? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you some stories.